Welcome to Bayou Time. I'm Jacob DeGate, and it's now my pleasure to be joined by Lafouche Parish District Attorney Christine Russell. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for us. having me. I appreciate it. All right. It's springtime coming up, and I know in the past uh, one of the things that, that your office has done is the Domino Program. Could you tell us, uh, the viewers, a little bit about that program? Absolutely. So back in 2004, um, when Cam Morvant was the District Attorney, uh, he, along with one of our assistants, Lisa Ogeron, really wanted to, to come up with some idea of some program to reach our, our seniors in high school. Uh, as they're finishing their high school career, they're getting ready for prom and for graduation parties, um, how can we get a message to them about drinking and driving? So in 2004, uh, they, they came up with this domino program. And the domino was, uh, if you think about dominoes, you hit one, if you line them up, they all mm -hmm. fall. So once you commit the crime, once you, you drive impaired and you're stopped by law enforcement, then that domino is hit. And then you have to deal with the DA's office and then, then the courts and then the consequences. So all those dominoes fall. Um, so since 2004, our office, and of course I inherited the program and it's so wonderful, mm -hmm. we've continued it. Every year, and we couldn't because of COVID, uh, but we're back. And so we go into the senior class. Um, it's, a, it's a very powerful program. We talk about the consequences, of course, if you are caught driving impaired, and as well as texting and driving. And God forbid you kill someone. Mm -hmm. We talk about that as well. And then we always have uh, a parent who's lost a child because of um, drinking and driving, and they tell their story. Uh, it's, it's always um, amazing to watch the kids' faces when they hear the story from that parent. There's usually not a dry eye in the place when we're finished, and it's very powerful. And at the end of that program, we give the kids a key, a key ring and something to put on their keys, um, and it's a domino. And we remind them of that story they just heard about that person who has passed away, and we tell them that when they grab their keys, remember that person and don't drink and drive. So, you know, we hope the program uh, all these years has been successful and has had an impact on, on the children of our parish, and we're going to continue it. Well, uh, you know, I, you mentioned... Uh hearing it straight from the source from people that, that have lost loved ones. I know I, in, in my career I've handled a case with somebody who lost both of his parents by, it was a teenager, you know, drinking and driving, leaving a party, got in a fight with a girlfriend, rushing, not paying attention, and lost both of his parents. And you can tell just on how much that affected that one client that, that will never be the same again. And it's just those quick decisions like that that uh, you know, everything could change in a blink of an eye. And it, it's true, it, and it's to, to make them realize that you know, nobody wakes up in the morning uh, and says, today I'm gonna get drunk and I'm gonna kill someone. It's just a series of bad decisions that get people in these situations, but it's so preventable. And, and I think now, and I've told some, you know, we've talked to, to Nichols students about how they're better than we were now that we have Uber and we have mm -hmm. Lyft. And this concept of a DD, a designated driver, is used so much. I think that generation may be better than us, and I hope so. But I still think that we have to continuously remind them about drinking and driving so they'll make good decisions. And they'll be proactive with their friends. If they see their friends going for their keys and we know they're impaired, they'll stop them and make good choices for them as well. Um, so we're hoping, again, that we get back in the classrooms, we're excited about that, and hopefully that we can reach these children so that we, again, um, won't have more fatalities in our roads. Sure. Um, I, I wrote, we, we're in Central Lafouche on March 20, uh, 30th, I'm sorry, March 31st will be at E.D. White, April 5th we're at Thibodeau High School, and April 7th we're at South Lafouche High School. And so, um, again, these parents who come forward, I don't know how they do it, sure. um, they, they, they dedicate their time and their hearts to go in front of these children and be vulnerable and show pictures of their child and say what they've been through. And, and really the reason they do it is just to have an impact on these children. And so we're blessed to have Ms. Fontenot and the EMARDs who have worked with me the past couple of years to tell their story. All right. And you, you mentioned early texting and driving. Uh, you know, obviously the, the kids these days, I think they are a lot better with, with drinking and driving, but texting and driving is, is something that, that has popped up recently and you see it more and more. And that's, that's another thing that, you know, you don't think about it as much as you think about drinking and driving, but, but it certainly can be just as dangerous. Yeah, and one of the, the, the videos that we, we show when we talk about is a young guy who looked down at his phone for one minute and he ended up hit, hitting a guy in a bicycle. 
mm-hmm. and how fast it was and how he has to live with that. And it is that split moment that, I mean, we probably all have done it and gotten away mm-hmm. with it and never thought, but it's that moment you don't see that person. How many times have we driven and said, wow, they came out of nowhere? Um, it's that person walking on the side of the road. So we, we do talk about that during the program just to remind them while drinking and driving is one of the, the big issues that we want to discuss. Certainly distracted driving, texting and driving can have the same results as drinking while driving. Sure, sure. And, it, and it's good to be, I guess, back in the school to, to see the kids. It's been a, a couple years now, I'm sure. It, you know, there, there has some been some time missed. There was nothing you can do about it, but but now you're, you're back in the class. Right? Yeah, and this was one of those programs you really couldn't do virtually like, sure. to have the impact that, that it has. I'm really sad that we missed a few senior classes because I think the program is that they put together in 2004 is still so great in 2022. So for me, um, I'm just glad that we can touch the lives of this group again and kind of get back in. Uh, out of all of our, our programs, this is the most emotional for me as well. I know it was for, for Mr. Morvant too, just to even have to stand in front of them and talk about it because I have kids, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but it's such an important topic and, and hopefully we can reach these kids and make a difference. Yeah, and, it, and it's not just, you know, hurting other people you also can hurt yourself too that's that's why you got to hammer that part home absolutely to the, to them. absolutely senior sources can you tell me a little bit about that yeah absolutely so in 2019 we introduced the program of senior sources and again because of covid and uh, we could not have it for the last two years um, but, I'm, but I'm really excited about this program, and it was great in 2019, so we're bringing it back. And the concept is is to bring uh, public officials uh, in front of our senior citizens and tell them about the uh, services that we provide to them. We have vendors that will come set up that provide free services, blood pressure, um, senior citizen centers. Um, and so it's a one-stop shop for them so they can find out what we have to offer in our parish for them. So we have scheduled on June 21st at the Thibodeau Civic Center from 8.30 to 10.30, our Senior Sources Program. But to make sure that we also um, provide that to our middle part of the parish and our senior citizens at the southern part of the parish, we'll be at the LaRose Civic Center on July 7th. And so we'll have uh, Sheriff Craig Weber talk about mm-hmm. things going on in their office as far as scams that maybe involve our senior citizens, et cetera. Our assessor, Wendy Thibodeau, comes and talks about things in her office uh, that may benefit our senior citizens. We have our clerk of court, um, Annette Fontana, she comes as well and, and speaks to them. Uh, we talk about in our office how we have a uh, assistant who handles uh, cruelty to, to the infirmed and to our older citizens. Uh, and then we'll have our parish president come. And so we, it, it's a great time to get everybody together, but it's an, also an opportunity for us to be able to tell them how we're trying to better serve them. And so in 2019, it, it was, it was um, well received. Mm-hmm. And I thought it would be a great thing to bring that back for that older generation that's done so much for all of us. Uh, here's an opportunity for us to serve them. Sure, sure. And uh, I know from my experience being on duty, you, you do get a lot of calls with, with uh, regarding se- people or concerned about their senior citizen, you know, their, either their grandmas or, or their elderly parents, and they feel they may be taken advantage of a lot of times. And that, that's somebody that you have in your office dedicated to handle those type of... We do. And, you know, um, we have an assistant who handles those cases. We have a victim's department that certainly is equipped to address it as well. And after Hurricane Ida, I find that we need to make sure that they understand about contract of fraud. And of course, we have prosecutors who handle that. But I think, you know, when you talk about our most vulnerable citizens, we usually talk about our children. And of course, we talk about our senior citizens. And so I think uh, children who have older parents might be interested in some of the material that we give. And just to educate them on things that we see in our office, what's the current trend when it comes to scams. Uh, and, and to let the sheriff, of course, address that with them as well. And then any other service that we can provide, we have the hospitals that come out and set up their tables as well. So we're looking forward to it. Um, I think it's just a great opportunity for us to educate our senior citizens and let them come together for one morning. All right. And how has it been so far with the hurricane? You know, a lot of people come in from, from out of town and some, unfortunately, some people try to take advantage of those when they're at their 
you know, most vulnerable. Have you seen a lot of cases like that so far? You know, we put together our contractor fraud team immediately after Ida to make mm -hmm. sure that we had prosecutors and investigators that were ready to work with law enforcement to make sure that we worked those cases. We do have several cases that came mm -hmm. in. The sheriff's office did a great job of sort of screening those calls and making sure that the civil cases were addressed civilly, but then we handled the criminal cases. So we did see an influx of those. We also, you know, took the position after Ida that if you were charged with looting or if you were charged with theft um, immediately after Ida and you took advantage of the people of Lafouche Parish um, when they were at, at their worst, then those were cases that we were going to put as priority and we wanted sure. to make sure that those penalties um, were harsh to set it because, again, I, I can't imagine an individual our own individuals in our parish, but those coming out and taking advantage of our people. And so we had a discussion amongst uh, with our ADAs and just said, make sure that you tag those cases and, mm -hmm. and we set the example. Well, certainly a <laughs> good idea. Uh, let's, let's move on to another, we had a couple minutes left, another one of your programs, uh, personal empowerment. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? One? Sure, uh, we call it our PEP program. We have one gen for girls and one for our boys. Uh, our boy program, David Melanson, um, usually presents those to our boys, and it's really about conflict resolution. We talk to our middle school boys about how to resolve things when we get frustrated and not uh, automatically going to physical violence. Uh, and with our girls, we talk about self-esteem and self-confidence. Uh, yesterday, uh, David and I went to Six Ward Middle School and uh, presented to the, the girls, and he presented to the boys. Our LCSW, Heidi Irwin, also goes into some of our schools to talk about self-esteem esteem issues with our girls. I think it's one a great opportunity for us to be proactive with our children. I think if we can make an impact on juvenile crime, we can build our children up. I think we're going to see, hopefully, a decrease in some of our crimes and our adult crimes as they get older. So we have made it a point in our office to make sure that we're visual and visible in our schools, that they know who we are, and that we want to increase that for our children. Um, we've, we've been well received again by the kids. I think it's a great opportunity for us to, to uh, interact with them. They teach us a lot, as, probably as much as we teach them. Sure, sure. Now, uh, moving on a little bit, uh, we do have a few seconds left about uh, trials that you, you're back uh, conducting trials now after the hurricane and COVID. We are. We are. Uh, can tell me how that's going. Yeah, so we're, and I think like all um, parishes that were affected, probably Terrebonne as well, we're trying to catch up. So we're trying to get as many trials that were kind of before the hurricane and before mm -hmm. COVID that we could not try. So we are trying not to waste a jury week. We just had one the other day. Uh, we convicted a, a female of manslaughter. They worked really hard on that. We have a few coming up in April. So I'm hoping that we can start trying to get some of the older cases out the way so we certainly can start looking at the newer cases um, but it's nice to kind of be back in a courtroom so that we can serve our victims again we need their voices to be heard well thank you very much for joining us we certainly appreciate as it. always thanks for having me all right stay tuned for more right here on HTV